So I just want to welcome everybody out there in YouTube land to our little presentation here that is about our Max Impact smartphone app that was created for the veterans of Washington State with the help of the Traumatic Brain Injury Council of Washington under the watchful eye of the Washington Department of Veterans Affairs. My name is Dan Overton, and I am going to just kind of lead you through some of the things that we've got going on in this app to hopefully encourage you to get out there and try it out. So the first thing I'd like to talk about is that my mouse isn't working, but there we go. Okay. First thing I'd like to talk about is really kind of what the app is all about. I'm going to jump right in. This app is not like any other app that is out there. We won't ask for any permissions. We're not going to, uh, to request to the people that we're building it for. They wanted it to be totally anonymous so that it's, there's no sneaky data mining. There's no grabbing your contacts. There's no knowing your location uh, and suddenly asking you, you know, why are you at Taco Bell right now? Um, once you download it, it's, it's, uh, everything is there. You don't need to be hooked into any uh, uh, Wi-Fi's or anything like that. So you don't need to stream anything. You don't need to sign up for any services. We're not going to ask you to subscribe for anything. This is a truly, uh, once you're logged in, it's free, it's anonymous, and uh, you are good to grab and go and, and enjoy everything that's there is to offer in this. One of the primary drives of this app is we wanted this app to uh, be really helpful to those people that were needing to get control of the symptoms of their traumatic brain injury. So when we start off, and I'm going to jump right into the app here, this is our home page. When you open up the app, you're going to see this, and it's going to ask for a check-in. Well, the reason that we did that is because so many times it's really not terribly easy to understand uh, what you're needing at the time. You just know that you're not feeling too good. So the app actually opens with this wizard. When you check in, you hit this little box right here, you're going to be asked how you're feeling today to see how you're checking in. So you tap the OK button, and once you check in, you're going to get a whole other screen. This screen here is asking about some of the more common symptoms that people have with a traumatic brain injury. We can't list them all. So what we ended up doing is talking to our support groups, and we talked to our uh, focus groups, and talked to the people in the field and see, hey, which are the primary symptoms that are really causing the people the most difficult uh, difficulty in their lives. This is what they came up with. So I'm going to walk you through the first one and show you the whole process of how this, this app works with in terms of this wizard. So we're going to start off by looking at that difficulty concentrate. So you hit that button right there. And what comes up with any of the symptoms that you see on there, the next page that's going to come up is going to give you a list of things to try. Um, now, you can try them all. You can try one of them. You can try all of them a bunch of different times. You can go back and, and, and ask again, and it might give you a different list of symptoms and things to try, or things to try. Now, you may think that this is all a uh, uh, set, and it's not, and it's just a randomizer, but it's actually not. This is actually what the, the IT folks call a wizard to try and really guide you to the right stuff that you need. So everything you see on that things to try is the things that we believe that are really going to help you in terms of your uh, working with your symptoms. So the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see to reach out. So once you hit that button, you're going to be asked uh, basically where you live in the state of Washington. Now, this app is available for anybody anywhere in the entire world. We've had downloads all over the world. Um, this is that place that is specific to the state of Washington and our veterans because the resources here are ones that we've collected for that are going to serve the veterans in Washington state. doesn't mean you can't use the app. It just means that this place specifically is for us in Washington state. So when you hit that region, select a region, you're going to see different regions of Washington state, and then you're going to be asked which kind of provider you're looking for because there's going to be not, it's not an exhaustive list, but we want to make sure that we've got things like neuropsychologists, support groups, behavioral health people, VA medical centers, and CBOX, and service benefit officers, and, and our, one of our newest categories is complementary therapy, so like dance therapy and equine therapy, and these alternative therapies that might be able to be help, helpful for those folks with a TBI. Um, so if you 
hit that and you select your region, you select your provider, the next thing you're gonna see is you're gonna see the, their information come up. Now, I have selected a behavioral health person in the I-5 corridor. That per then I've got a choice of two different people here. Once I hit one of those buttons, uh, then basically I'm gonna be given their information and I can actually just touch uh, their phone number and it will auto dial for me. Really super, super easy. So the next thing you're gonna see on this things to try is a self-timed meditation under the relax section of our app. You hit that button and it'll automatically throw you into the self-guided meditation. Um, this particular meditation is recommended simply because many times when people are trying to concentrate, what the, the thing that's getting in the way is something that we call flooding. Anybody can flood. Everybody is going to flood at some time or another. Flooding is when we just have too much going on. So our brain just can't handle it. Um, if you think about our brain like a computer and you just have too many windows open, then suddenly everything gets sluggish and it might actually crash on you. Well, that's the same thing as flooding. Um, but flooding for our brain is going to be lights and sounds and smells and movement and this and that. And so this picture of, of Times Square is, is, is perfect because there's just way too much going on. And your, your brain can suddenly kind of go, you know what, <laughs> this is, I, I give up. And if you're, if you're trying to concentrate while well, all of this stuff is going on, it can be really, really difficult. So many times, all you really need to do is slow down. That's why the meditation tool is there. We will often talk in TBI about brain bucks. Well, your brain is every anytime we do anything, we're going to be spending brain bucks. The idea is that thinking takes actual energy. Your your brain is is, is using about 20% of your daily calorie intake. It sounds crazy, but there's a lot of stuff going up between my ears right now that is, is spending a lot of energy. Now that energy has to come from somewhere. Um, and before the TBI, I'm gonna have a certain amount of brain bucks that I can spend, and I get used to spending those in my daily life. But after a traumatic brain injury, I'm gonna have a lot less than in my, in my daily life. Um, so I'm gonna wake up with less, they're gonna be spent a lot quicker, which means I'm gonna to have to recover that a lot more often during my day. So one of the ways that you can do that is to simply step off and relax. So that nice meditation tool, I could go out to my truck and I can say, listen, I'm gonna give my brain five minutes to recover and get a little more brain bucks back. It's got a nice chime at the beginning. I can say, listen, five minutes because that's what my break is. And chime at the end and in that five minutes I can just let my brain relax so that's one of the reasons why that's there the next thing that you see on the things to try is the picture recall game now the picture recall game is what we call a skill building because when on one hand we want the brain to relax on the other hand we want to create these new pathways or strengthen the old pathways that are responsible for what we're trying to do so when it comes to concentration we want to put a concentration game in the app to to get those pathways jiving again okay we want to get a little more energy the more you use it the better it's going to get so this is a really nice game to be able to use it's got three different levels you may think that uh the easy level is super, super easy, but when you get to that harder, the, the, the larger ones and the more uh, expert kind of levels, even this game will be able to challenge your concentration skills uh, if you've done it a hundred different times. So um, that's what we call skill building and hopefully that'll help out. Now, the last thing is really kind of cool and that is our tip section. Our tip section is an, an opportunity for us to be reminded of those things that are helpful to us. So uh, this particular tip, and you look at difficulty concentrating, right? It'll pull up tips in, in terms of difficulty concentrating in our tip library. And these are all the tips that are related to difficulty concentrating. My favorite one on the bottom is take a break. Do I need to be reminded for taking a break? 
Absolutely. And given my own devices, I'm going to work straight through. I'm not going to leave my desk. I'm going to have my snacks and my cot. I'm not going to do it. And unfortunately, I'm no good like that. Anybody is going to get just brain tired by just drive, 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 drive. We all need to be reminded to take a break. You know, in the old days, we the, the factory whistles and they would say, hey, let's everybody take a break because it was a good idea because there's a point where everybody is going to get a little sloppier, a little messier. And when that happens, you know, we, we don't function as well. In a factory, that could be really, really dangerous. So that's why we'd have those factory whistles to say, everybody is going to take a break. We need to be reminded of that. And so the tips are there to remind us of things that we would probably know already, but just need to be reminded of. You can actually favorite all of those tips. So if there's something that works for you, like the take a break for me, I could favorite that. So I can actually go into my tips and see about those things that are really working for me. Um, so let's go back. So that's how each symptom is going to work. So uh, I'm going to keep going back to the home section and talk about uh, how each of these symptoms are going to break out. Okay. So the next section here, I'm going to go ahead and check in, but this time I'm going to hit the fatiguing or tiring easily and talk a little bit about what's in there and why it's there. Well, the, let's start for the why. Before a traumatic brain injury, we tend to have a lot of what we call mental reserve. Okay, so again, think about the your thinking and your doing and your calculating all having to do with expending a lot of energy. And let's say that I'm just totally done. Well, I typically will have this kind of mental reserve to be able to juice me back up a lot quicker. Uh, think of it like a one of those external batteries that you jump your car with, right? You just carry the back seat in case you need that little extra boost, right? Well, unfortunately, after a traumatic brain injury, I don't have as much reserve. So I'm not going to recover as quickly. So once, once I've gone through all my brain bugs, I'm not going to recover as quickly. I need a little bit of help. The brain, the reason that that's happening is that the brain is going to have to work harder to do everything after a brain injury. This is a picture here, right here uh, before a concussion and after a concussion of some of the things that we just typically take for granted, such as working memory, motor planning, and number processing. You can see that uh, on the left is without the concussion, at, on the right is after a concussion, and there's more activity after the concussion which might seem a little weird because we're, you know, we often talk about neurons that are not there anymore or, you know, the, 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 the axon's been damaged, so you get this diffuse axonal injury and the, all the parts that are missing. Well, the fact that there are parts that are maybe missing or damaged is why the brain has to work harder. It has to make more connections to do what it used to do with fewer connections. So it's working harder, meaning you're spending more brain bucks, meaning that you're going to get fatigued quicker, meaning that you're going to need to recover more often. And unfortunately, you're not having the reserve that you used to have to help you recover. So what do we do about that? Well, in the app, the main thing we're going to do is we're going to suggest that you take a few minutes to yourself through a meditation. There's different parts of the brain that are doing different things. Okay. And we, if you, if you, like really want to get into it, you can actually look and see when you're adding numbers, what part of your brain is working, when you're talking, what part of your brain is working. We can actually see this kind of stuff now. Well, when you meditate, you typically kind of go away from most of those really kind of hard cognitive processing. And you kind of do a little bit of mental recreation. Okay. So it gives the brain a kind of opportunity to kind of go, <gasps> You know, and just relax. Now, in the app, um, there's that self-guided one that I talked about. But if you look at some of those meditations, most of them are really, really short. They're short for a reason. The main reason is because most of us don't want to commit to a long meditation. If we look at like an hour-long meditation, most of us are like, oh, I just don't have the time. Well, you won't see any of that in here. There's, there are some out there. So if you really get into it, there's plenty of other opportunity for you to find other um, avenues for longer meditations. But in terms of the app, we wanted to make sure that 
that it was like nice and short. So most of these are going to be able to fit within your lunch break. Most of these are going to be able to fit within your, your daily life. Um, the other thing that we're going to suggest, though, is the breathing app or the breathing section of the app. Now, this tool is a pretty cool tool that I suggest you, you download and you play with it because there's a couple things going on here. Okay. Um, again, live meditation, when we can do a rhythmic cyclical breathing, meaning the same in and the same out with the same length of time, we send all kinds of wonderfully calming chemicals through our body. This particular app or this particular tool there's a couple things going for it. First of all, it's going to engage you visually. That you're going to see that that little circle in the middle begin to expand and contract as you're inhaling and exhaling. So your eyes have something to do to pay attention to. You're also going to hopefully plug in with some earplugs and listen to that lovely lady who talks to you and says, "Okay, we want you to inhale for one, two. I can't do it as well as her, but three, four, and then." So you're, you're engaged that way too. So you're not always thinking of, okay, I've, I've got to think about something else. And then it is rhythmical and cyclical to your timing. You can increase or decrease the length of time between these breaths. So it really helps kind of reset uh, us on a real physical level. It's a really, really neat little um, tool that you can use. The other thing that we're going to look at is to distract us. Um, the, the games are there partially for skill building and partially for some of those things that we're going to try and engage. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, but the other part is just flat out distraction. Um, if we're trying to recover that part of that brain that has been like, it's, it's I, I've thought about math for three hours. I can't think of math anymore. I just can't go there. If I take the brain away and then just distract it for a little bit, have a little fun, then that math stuff starts to be able to rebuild itself back up in a matter of speaking. Uh, so we just simply distract. We just have a good time. And we want to have something that's going to distract us enough that we don't kind of keep going back and back and back to that thing that we were um, working on that was just absolutely taking us, you know, all of our brain bucks to use. So distraction, go back to the games. The next thing, we go back to the home page and we're going to look at what the app talks to about headaches. Now, headaches are tough. Um, headaches are a really tough thing to think about how an app is going to help with that. I don't want to get too scientific. You can look at our reference section about all the ways that we looked into this, but I can tell you straight up that you know we had a lot of really, really um, heavy duty minds and, and we did a lot of research. One of the things we did come up with is going back to um, some things that we actually couldn't put in the app. One of the primary causes of headaches has to do with sensory stimulation and the way that our brain manages that. Right now, I am under fluorescent lights. They're not good for us in terms of traumatic brain injury. Fluorescent lights actually flicker at a very, very higher rate that we're not conscious of but our brain is, and it spends a lot of brain bucks just being under a fluorescent light. Now, this here is a picture of a, an app that you can get. Um, I don't, I'm not recommending it, it's just an example of one, and it is a, an app that will tell you what kind of light you're being exposed to and how much. So it's kind of good to walk around your office, to walk around your home and see kind of how much you're being exposed to if you got problems with headaches the less is better. The other thing you can do is look into an app, or a, um, sorry, an app that has to do with, with looking at the amount of noise that you're subjecting yourself to. You will be, maybe, you might be surprised that just in a car, how much noise you're being subjected to by driving to and from work. Again, here, in, in especially if you're talking about headaches, less is better. So you want to make sure that if you're if you're in a position where you're exposed to a lot of sound and light, that you give yourself a break, because if you keep pushing, you're you're really running the risk of uh, increasing your headaches. The last thing in the app, and we do have that meditation tool again. Why do I keep coming back to meditation? Because there's so many benefits, and one of the benefits that we know of is that if a person 
can engage in the kind of meditation that, we're, that we talk about here, especially the guided meditation and the rhythmic breathing, then you can sometimes put off the headache. Once you've got it, if it's a really bad migraine, it might not help that much. But if you're, if you're taking the position of trying to put it off, um, meditation has been proven to be very, very effective in that case. The next thing I do want to talk about, though, without um, getting too far away from the app, is that if you're a sub subject to migraines, if you've got problems with headaches at all, the, you've got to get yourself some fluoride coated glasses. Now, you can either have them fluoride coating on your prescription glasses, you can get fluoride coated sunglasses, you can get fluoride coated uh, contact lenses, you can get them for inside and outside, you can get them from a couple different companies. But there's a lot of research to prove that that cuts down on a person's um, migraines. So wear them inside, it's especially if you're subjected to fluorescent lights, um, get yourself some migraine glasses. They're relatively cheap, and frankly, you know, even if it were to cost a little more than I'm comfortable with, and it meant that I'm not going to have another migraine, I, I can tell you from myself, I'm down with that. Um, because those migraines are a horrible thing, and they just take me out of life. So that's it for headaches. We're going to go back to the main page. The next thing we're going to look at is memory problems. So in terms of memory problems, the first thing we're going to be called up and one of the reasons why is our skill building again. In terms of skill building, we're going to go back to the games because games are just a fun way of building skill. Uh, you can build these skills all kinds of ways, but you know, if you're going to if you're going to do it, why not have some fun with it? So this is our we got a couple different games here. This one is the picture recall game where you've got a picture and then it's covered up and you got to try and remember where those pieces of the picture fit. Again, like the other game, uh, this is skill building because we're trying to use those pathways that are re responsible for memory. We're trying to engage those as much as possible, get that part of the brain that's working towards memory, even though we're just playing a game. The other game is the same game I mentioned before because it is also not just a concentration game, but it's also a memory game. And you're supposed to remember where those little tiles popped up. So that, that game will also have something to do with hopefully building some skill memory, um, and skill building in terms of your memory. Apart from the app, uh, our personal app, there are other apps that are out there that can help with memory. We've got all kinds of memory tools out there that don't really appear like memory tools. I have a uh, uh, one at home that her name starts with an A and ends with an A, and every time I talk about her, she sends a listen in. But um, there's other kinds of things that you can do around the house. The, these voice recognition tools are out there, and they're really, really effective, and they've been coming down in price. So um, you can get one of those, but you can also look at a personal assistant on your phone. A lot of phones come with a personal assistant now. Um, Google has a good personal assistant. There's Bixby on the Samsung phones. Or you can actually download uh, some personal assistants from the web. This is one that I, I personally tried out. It was okay, um, you know, but it, and it worked. I could say, hey, listen, please set me an appointment at 2 p.m. with the dentist. And I would hear that little voice come back and go, okay, so at 2 p.m. with the dentist, I'll remind you. And so my phone would then buzz and say, hey, you got a 2 p.m. dentist appointment. Very, very effective. So those are out there. We didn't have enough room or time or money to be able to put that on our app. But what we did put on the app is your ability to look at what your phone does offer you. Every phone, every smartphone, if you can download this app, you got a smartphone that has some accessibility features. Now, whether you looked at that or not, I don't know. Most of us have no idea that these things even exist. So we wanted to make sure that we had a way for you to, to easily go in and look at all the accessibility features that your phone has to offer. So right here on the screen, you, you, you can pop up and you can check out what your phone will do and it'll take you to uh, that specific place where your phone's accessibility features are. The last thing is maybe kind of a weird uh, thing to think about in terms of memory and that's back to this breathing tool. Well, 
the reason that we come back to the breathing tool is that that little break that you might be able to give yourself. So if I if I'm having struggle, if I'm having trouble remembering something, and I get that tip of the tongue thing where it's like, oh, it's right there, it's right there. I can't, I just God, oh, if I just I, I can't re, I just can't recall it. Many times, if we just give ourselves a little mental break, just a smidge of a mental break, then it comes to us. Now, there's a lot of psychological reasons why that occurs, and I'm not going to go into it. But the bottom line is that if you're really having some struggles with memory, stop, step off, do a little breathing, take a break, and, and chances are it, it's going to come to you. So it's one of those things that we want to include as a tool because it can be really, really helpful for somebody to get in the habit of doing if you've got problems with memory. Okay? Okay. Back to the main screen. The next one is noise and light sensitivity. And in terms of noise and light sensitivity, there's those things that I already talked about. The migraine glasses, the light, sensi the light meter, the sound meter, but also the soothing sounds. On the app, we're going to suggest that you look at the soothing sounds when it comes to noise and light sensitivity. But that's noise. Ah, yes, but many times when it comes to noise and light sensitivity, it is the lesser of two evils. Okay? So in terms of light, I need light to work. But it, it, I'm going to take the lesser two evils and I'm going to ditch the fluorescence and have an incandescent. Okay? You know, when it comes to noise, if I'm going to be subjected to noise, I'm going to take the lesser of two evils and choose a soothing sound, which is a these you've got a choice of six different sound loops, all of which are really, really nicely crafted. You're not going to really pick up where they loop over, and they're all going to have really nice, relaxing sounds of chimes or the sea or the waterfall. My favorite, personally, is the forest because I like the birds and I like to think that I'm out there walking. Um, and it's just it's nice to be able to put on when I'm working or when I'm cooking, when I'm it's subjected to sounds that I may not want to have around me, I can choose to have the sounds that I want. And these are sounds that are going to be a little bit um, more comfortable to my brain than the jackhammer that's outside. That, that makes any sense. So we're back to the front page. We're going to look at difficult emotions. Having difficult emotions is not really the problem now, when it comes to a person with traumatic brain injury. All of us have difficult emotions. It is part of us being a human being. The problem comes in in that after a traumatic brain injury, our filters are not working like they should. So where I might be able to normally take that extra beat, that extra breath, before I totally just lose it and start going off on somebody, well, I, I don't have that same ability after the traumatic brain injury because my the, those normal filters are not going to be working like they should. So that's further complicated by the fact that we heard, have already discussed we're going to be tiring quickly, we're going to have less brain bucks, we're going to have less reserve, and our brain's going to be working harder. So it's just going to be that much easier to push that person over the edge because they're, they're already riding so close to it because of all the brain is starting to do. And so many times the reason that a person will just totally lose it after traumatic brain injury, they'll be like, I, don't, I, just, I just I lose it way too easy, way too often. It's because you're always right there near the edge. It, it's hard to pull yourself back off of that. So again, one of the things we're gonna suggest is take that break. Know when you're needing that, you're, you're just getting too close to the edge and you need to pull yourself off it just a smidge, you know, to where it's like, I, I'm feeling a little bit, you know, just a, just a, yeah. And, and so I'm just going to take a few minutes. You'll see the top one there is called our panic button. And it's only five minutes long, five minutes. I mean, we probably spend more time brushing our teeth than it'll take for this particular meditation. It's that, it's that way for a reason. It's because that is the, I've had it, I need to step off to a quiet corner of my car, and I just need to pull myself together, pull myself back from the edge. Because, again, having negative emotions is not the problem. Having difficult emotions is not the problem. Even being angry is not the problem. It's when we lose our temper. 
Okay, when it's just that after the explosion, nothing else is really going to be effective. So up until that point, we can be really, really effective, but we need to really understand when we're right, getting too close, we need to feel that. We'll have some kind of tell in our body, and we just need to take a few minutes. So we want to make sure that we gave some people uh, this opportunity. Again, that, that wonderful lady is going to walk you through the whole thing, and it's going to be okay. If you, if you chose this, you're probably not in a great place, so let's just get right to it. Breathe, relax, in, in five minutes of your time, and it'll help you to be pull you back from that edge and give you a little bit more um, breathing room. Speaking of breathing room, I'm also going to mention that you might see the breathing app come up or that breathing tool come up. Again, it comes up for a very, very good reason. We can't always control our thoughts, especially when our brain is just being hammered time and time and time and time. We can't control our thoughts, but we can always control our breathing. Okay, so if you think about, you know, I can hold my breath. I can hold it for a good long time. My brain is probably at some point going to go, breathe, idiot, breathe. But I can do that because there's a, there's a whole different set of, of nervous system stuff I'm not going to go into. But you can always control your breathing. When you control your breathing, the weird thing happens is that you start sending lovely chemicals throughout your body that start to like talk about calming the body down and calming the brain down. So many times what we can see through our research is that that cyclical, uh, rhythmic, and deep breathing can actually counteract a lot of these kind of uh, fight, flight, freeze, um, endorphin, uh, well, I'm not really endorphin, but the chemicals, and the, the adrenalines that we send out through our body when we start to get angry and tense and frustrated and, and the things that send our body into this really tense kind of closing up thing, right? And so we can start sending those more relaxing chemicals that we tend to have when we're sleeping. You know, think about when you're sleeping or you listen to somebody sleep, they do that same kind of breathing, right? And if I walk around the office going, people think I'm weird, but really I'm just relaxing, right? Um, so that actually will tend to send those, those lovely chemicals through. So we want to encourage people, hit that breathing tool if you're having some trouble getting close to that edge. Um, it's something you can do even if you're not going to step off. You just need to take a little moment, say, hey, just give, give me a minute, step off a little bit, take some time with the breathing tool. Um, you should find yourself coming back off that ledge a little bit. Back to the main page. We're going to go down to the ringing in the ear and tinnitus. Very, very common uh, symptom that people talk about all the time with traumatic brain injury and a really difficult one to deal with. There's a lot of research out there about uh, what it is, what it isn't, where it comes from. It's incredibly mysterious it's still to this point. Uh, because it's a sound, but it's not a sound. It's not coming from outside. I mean, I've got it right here, and it's always there, but it's not. If I cover my ear, it doesn't stop. So um, there's a lot of techniques that people talk about to be able to help with that, and there's a lot of research being done about different different things to be done in the app. The really the only thing we can do is one of the most common things to do about tinnitus, and that's cover it up. If you, if I was to put on head uh, noise canceling headphones, I still got it. So I really want to put in the sound that'll help mask it, so it's not quite as annoying. So I go back to the soothing sounds, and the soothing sounds are gonna—they're not gonna get rid of it, but they're gonna mask it. So instead of the, ee, I'm gonna hear the birds chirping and the waterfall and the leaves rustling, and it's a much nicer sound to be in my head throughout the day. Back to the main page. The next one we're going to look at is sleep problems. This is one of the final ones. And we get like the tinnitus, sleep is a very, very common problem for folks with traumatic brain injury and a really difficult one to deal with in an app. Uh, there are some things in the app to look at in terms of looking at how to work with sleep because we, we talked about something called sleep hygiene. Sleep hygiene is a kind of program that you can use for, you know, what you look for to help yourself 
sleep, such as fluorescent lights, blue light, color of the wall in your bedroom, uh, certain sights, sounds, smells that might be able to help you. Because there's two pieces to sleep problems. Getting to sleep, staying asleep. So we, the app itself can't do a whole lot about staying asleep. So we really tried to focus on getting to sleep. One of the first things we do is go back to that meditation timer. Meditation timer is nice because all of the meditations uh, are really kind of designed to help you relax. And if you're trying to get to sleep, one of the biggest things you can do to help yourself get to sleep is just relax. So the meditation will help. But the, the one that's really kind of on the uh, research side is being proven to help is right down there on the second level, and it's called the progressive muscle relaxation. And again, you'll be led through the whole process, and it's about being able to kind of scrunch up and then release. Because again, like the breathing, when you scrunch up and release, you're actually sending really relaxing chemicals throughout your body to help the entire system kind of go, okay, I guess we're gonna just relax now. Okay, I get this, you know. Um, so progressive muscle relaxation and the guided or the meditation time are very, very helpful. In terms of staying asleep though, I have heard, and this is actually coming from users that have talked to me, they'll actually put the soothing sounds on a Bluetooth or an external speaker so that they can listen to this while they sleep. Because, and I, I can tell you, if I'm in a hotel room and they got those little like window uh, heaters that are running all down, you know, it's just like a Mack truck outside my window. I have a hard time getting to sleep. I throw on the soothing sounds and again, I'm cutting out or overriding some of the sounds. And if it continues on that loop, then it's gonna help me hopefully stay asleep a little bit better. Just saying that I've heard from some folks that have done that and they really, really like it. So it's something to try to hopefully help somebody stay asleep once you're asleep. Now that's the last category, but I do want to go into a few more pages before I wrap up for, for good. So hang in there just a little bit longer. I appreciate you hanging in there for as long as you have. The, the first page I want to talk about is that there's a big button on that front page. It says TBI resources. When you open up their resources, you're going to see a bunch of different options, uh, such as you see right here on the screen, the screener, the finder provider, the tips library, the, the FAQ, and the web resources. There's a lot going on here. So I'm going to start with the screener because that's another big button. It, it, it has its own button. It's so important. And it's also underneath this uh, the TBI resources. The screener is not, the med not meant to be a diagnostic tool but it is meant to start the conversation about, hey, these symptoms may be related to you having a traumatic brain injury. Now they may not, but at the same time, if, if it's a may, then that's the opportunity to learn more about what traumatic brain injury is, what it isn't, maybe talk to a provider about that, maybe talk to somebody that has a traumatic brain injury, to start to learn about what this, you know, what the symptom might mean to you and how to start managing it. Is all the symptoms that we've talked about so far, most of these are not going to be anything that are going to be necessarily disabling, but putting all together, they can really interfere with somebody's quality of life. We're just looking to improve that by helping somebody manage these symptoms. So the screener's there to start the conversation, look at what, you know, how a person might get a traumatic brain injury, um, and to hopefully get the word out about unfortunately how prevalent this this uh, situation is if you go into the tbi faq now faq stands for frequently asked questions frequently asked of who of me i've been doing this kind of work for a couple decades now um, and we also went around and talked to other providers who were getting asked questions so it's basically if you were to have a an expert online and you were to ask them questions, what questions might you ask them? Well, we came up with the most commonly asked questions and we came up with a kind of consensus of answers that, that hopefully um, make a lot of sense. Now, is it exhaustive? No. Is it the end all be all of, of answers? No. It's, a, again, an opportunity to start some conversation. If you want more information, that little blue button up there, uh, hit that and get a hold of us. We, we're here for anybody. If you live in Timbuktu, uh, you can still give us a call and we'll pick up the phone and, 
try and help you answer any kind of questions you got. So if you're in the FAQ, you're going to see some of the very, very simple answers to some of more of the common questions. And uh, again, if you need more information and you want to get get more uh, learning, well, there's we got stuff for that too. Most of that's going to be in our resource page. Yeah, we got a resource page too. So in that, there's going to be Washington State TBI resources, but there's also going to be military related resources. Because again, we're the Washington State uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, and this was developed primarily for our Washington State veterans. Uh, so of course, we're going to be kind of slanted towards the veterans resources. There's going to be general TBI resources in there. There's going to be some book resources. There's going to be web resources. Um, there's going to be all kinds of opportunities for you to start your journey of learning because the the at the end of the day so much of symptom management is learning more about what's going on why it's going on and what you can do about it so we really want to encourage folks to learn more about what's going on great way of learning is also connecting with those around us the other folks with tbi so we actually have a way for you to do that or if you go into the tbi community section you're going to see the opportunity to join our closed Facebook group, okay? And you can go in there, and there's going to be an opportunity for you to connect with other folks that have traumatic brain injury, um, learn about some of this. this is a way for us to keep things really current. I'm going to throw up stuff that I see about new research, about things that are going on in your area, about support groups that you might want to be a part of. Um, if you've got a question, we can pose it to the community and get questions not only from Folks like me that might be on the expert side, but also folks that are on the, you know, the the survivor side of, hey, I've been dealing with this for a long time. This is what I'm doing. Um, the other side of that is that, you know, this might actually, all of these resources and the FAQs and everything in here, including the screener, are very, really helpful for those that are learning about your head injury. Okay, so the people that want to know about, like, if I'm a family member and I want to know about what's going on with my father, with my mother, with my kid, with my sister that has had a head injury, this can be really, really helpful. Know what it is, what it isn't, what might happen next. Um, and is that support there for you? Absolutely. We are gonna support everybody related to this head injury. Employers, educators, family members, brothers, sisters, you name it, we're gonna try and be there to help you out. So. Um, that's what it was really designed to try and help anybody that's related to or has a head injury. So check it out and see what we can come up with. Now, the last thing I want to do is talk about this thing called a hamburger. The hamburger is this icon up in the top left, and it actually kind of looks like a hamburger. When you, if you want to get to something really quickly in the app, you tap that hamburger and then all that stuff will slide over and give you the opportunity to access it very, very quickly. All right. And that is really about it. Um, so to kind of wrap everything up, I, uh, I, I want to just kind of reiterate that this app is hopefully going to be a one that is really your app, okay? That So if there's something that's in here that you think could be better, could be improved upon, let me know because we might be able to do that. We want to make sure that this, this app was uh, designed originally. You might, well, the dog. People ask about the dog. It has a lot to do with why we did this and how we did this. So as we are sitting around with our control group when we're talking about really what we what people need, they said, listen, we need something that's going to be with us all the time that is going to not nag, um, but more nudge. That's going to be something that I can rely on, that I know I'm going to feel better that I've got it with me. And it's going to help me to manage my symptoms. It's going to help me to relax. It's going to help me to enjoy things a little bit more. And we kind of thought, well, that's a lot like a service dog. So we 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 kind of came up with this idea of, of Max Impact being the virtual service dog. Being virtual means that it is an app. Being an app means it is, is available on all the iPhone platforms. And it's also available on all the Android platforms. 
So you find the iPhone stuff through your iPhone store, and you find your, your Android stuff through the Google. Um, if you have any trouble with that, you can always just get a hold of us here at the Washington Department of Veterans Affairs, and we'll help you figure it out. Also, if you type in brain injury app, I understand that we, it'll probably come up pretty easily if you were to do so. So, um, and um, I, I will, and you're probably seeing this uh, on the on our YouTube channel. So, if you go to our traumatic brain injury section, there's going to be information there. And if we can help you in any way, you just give us a holler. Because at the end of the day, it's really about trying to, you know, um, just have a little bit more enjoyment out of life. Um, we we want to make sure that we we uh, um, again the <laughs> I just totally lost my train of thought that we because you know, I, I I love this picture and the the reason I love this picture is because yeah we're having a little fun and this is about having a little bit of fun it's the brain injury is a serious thing but we want to be able to try and help the folks that download this app to just be able to manage their life a little bit more so they can have just a little bit more fun. I really appreciate you taking the time and the attention and the brain box that it took to sit through this entire presentation. Hopefully it was helpful to you, and I thank you so much. I hope to see you soon in terms of uh, getting a hold of us and anything we can do. Thank you.